and functions, definitions, relation, a set of ordered pairs or an equation in which the set of, of ordered pairs makes the equation true. So you could have ordered pairs. Okay, so a function, we've actually talked about these before. It's a relation in which each element of the domain, this is the domain is x, is paired with exactly one element of the range and the range has to do with y. So each x is paired with a y. And the most important thing really is why it's in red. No repeating x values. If it has any repeating x values like up in the relation, three and three, two and two, this would not be a function. It's just a relation. No repeating x values. So here we have x, we have y, and when I look at this set, I see one is being mapped to p, two is being mapped to q, and three is being mapped to q. But if I look at just my x's, it's going once, once, once. They're all just one. So this is a function. I don't see any repeating x's. I have one p, two q, three r. I don't see any repeating numbers here in the x's. There may be some repeating y's, that's okay. I got two q's, p, q, q, but that's, it's about the x's, no repeating x's, and it's a function. If I look at this one, what's happening in this one? It's not a function, why? Because the y is. What's repeating on this one to make it not a function? The two, it says no repeating x values. So I'm looking at my x's, I got a one, then I got a two p and a two q, I got two twos. So this one is not a function. One to one means no repeating y values. So here I look at what's being mapped. One D, two B, three A. What do you think? Is this one one to one? What's repeating? It's true the C is not being used, but are there any repeating y values? One to one. What does one to one mean? No repeating y values. So it's a function because there's no repeating x values, but is it one to one? No, because it's got repeating y values. So yes, it may be a function, but it's not one to one because I see I got two c's being used. It's about the y values when it's one to one. It's about the x values if it's a function. So this is not one, two, one. And I actually messed up on this. I see why you kept saying that. While it's true that this is a function, it's one-to-one -one is what I wanted to put here. We wanna use one-to-one -one on this one. One, two, one. Sorry about that. It could be an equation, it could be a table of values, it's just a relation. It's showing the relationship between X and Y. Function, a relation in which each element of the domain is paired with exactly one element of the range. We see that one is being paired with P, two is being paired with Q, and three is also being paired with Q. To be a function, you need to make sure there's no repeating X values. I see one, two, three. There are no repeating x values. Even though the y's are repeating, I have p, q, q. Even though the y's are repeating, it doesn't matter. To be a function, it needs to have no repeating x values. And we will see that when we are looking at a graph, we're going to do a vertical line test. One to one function, each element of the domain is paired to exactly one unique element of the range. This means no repeating y values. Here I see 1 to D, 2 to B, and 3 to A. No repeating Y values. If I was looking at a graph, I would do the horizontal line test to make sure there were no repeating Y values. Example 1, state the domain and the range of the relation. Does the relation represent a function? 
the domain. Remember that the domain is about the X values and the range is about the Y values. The domain here then is the set of negative one, zero, one, two, three. The range is the set of numbers negative five, negative three, negative one, one, three. Make sure that you list them least to greatest. We need to check, does the relation represent a function? If you look at your definition of function, we need to see that there are no repeating X values. So I look at my X values, I look at the domain values, and I see there are no repeating X values. Yes, the relation represents a function. Example two, state domain and range of each relation, then determine whether the relation is a function. If it is a function, determine if it's one-to-one. -one. All right, start with domain. Zero point five, zero point four, three point one, zero point four. So least to greatest, we have zero point four, zero point five, and three point one. We have two zero point fours, but you don't need to list it twice. In the range, we have. Three, two, one, zero. So zero, one, two, three. Determine whether the relation is a function. So again, I'm looking at those X values and I see that I have 0 0.4, 0 0.4. I have repeating X values, not a function. If it is a function, determine if it's one to one. Well, it's not a function, so we're not going to determine whether it's one to one. Example B. Negative five, four, three, negative seven. So we have negative seven, negative five, three, four. In the range, we have two, negative two, negative 11, two. So negative two, two, and negative 11. Again, I see that I have two twos for my y values, but I'm not going to write them both down. Does this represent a function? Negative five, four, three, negative seven. I see no repeating x values. And now we're going to see if it's one-to-one. -one. Looking at your definition, one-to-one -one states there are no repeating Y values. I see two and two. Not one, two, one. Next one, we have domain 0 0.5, 0 0.1, and six. So we have one-tenth one half and six. For the range, negative three, 12, eight. Negative three, eight and 12. Looking at our X values to see if it's a function, a half, one tenth and six. So yes, it's a function. Looking at our y values, negative 3, 12, and 8, no repeating y values. So yes, 1, 2, 1.
equations that represent functions are often written in function notation. Y equals 10 minus 8X can be written as F of X equals 10 minus 8X. F of X. That is how you say this first part of the function. F of X equals 10 minus 8X. We need to realize that F of X also means Y. I can interchange them all the time. If I have an equation that says Y equals, I can put F of X in. If I have an equation that has F of X, I can replace that with a Y. They mean the exact same thing. When I take and substitute X into the function, it always tells me the Y value. That's what this is. You're substituting your X value into the function. Here's the function. Let's see how that works on the next example three. Given f of x equals x squared plus 2x, find each value. I want to know about f of 3. f of 3 means that I am going to be substituting in for any x. I have x being squared and then 2 times x. What is x going to be? 3. I'm substituting in 3 for all the x's. And now we need to simplify. Remembering the order of operations always when you are simplifying. Are there any parentheses? Yes, but there's nothing in there to do. Are there any exponents? Yes, I start here. Three squared, three times three is nine. Is there any multiplying and dividing? Yes, I am multiplying here. 2 times 3 is 6, and then I finish with adding and subtracting. 9 plus 6 is 15. So f of 3 equals 15. When I substituted in x was 3, I found that y was 15. Another way to look at this is that when x is 3, we just found that y is 15. It is an ordered pair that I could plot on a graph. I substituted in x, and it gave me the y value. All right, let's try the next one, f of 5a. Okay, so it says that I'm going to put parentheses wherever my x is, and then I'm going to substitute in whatever they give me, and it can look funky in math sometimes. We like f of 3. We get a nice, sweet answer at the end of it, but this is algebra. So I'm going to substitute in 5a, and then I'm just going to simplify as far as I can. Sometimes I get a number. Sometimes I get algebra at the end of it. 5a. Two times. Well, I'm substituting into this. This is the function, x squared plus 2x. So all I did was put parentheses where these x's were. Okay? Question is, what is 5a squared? Think about it for a second. What is 5a squared? Mm -hmm. Almost, I hear 25a. Remember that 5a squared means 5a times 5a. What's a times a? You're going to add your exponents. a squared. a times a is a to the second power. And then you are right about 5 times 5 for that part. Now, what about the next part? What's 2 times 5a? 10a. That's it, 10a. 2 times 5a is 10a. And we did do stuff like that in algebra. So we found that f of 5a equals 25a squared plus 10a. Okay. That's it. If I knew what a was, then I could go further, but I do not know what a is. Let's go to graphing. Graph. Determine the domain and range, and then determine whether the relation is a function. Is it one-to-one? -one? Is it both? Is it either? Okay, I want you to think for a minute about graphing y equals 3. We did this in Algebra 1. We graphed y equals 3. Exactly, that's a good place to start. It says y equals 3. So here's 3. That's a good start because that is true. There's something there. All the y's have to be three. Is that the only place where y equals three? It only on the y-axis though, because it says y equals three. 
Is that the only place that y equals three? Does y equal three right here? Does it equal it here? How many times am I gonna have to do this? How about right here? Does y equal three right here? It's not? Isn't this three still? So does y equal three there? So how many times am I gonna have to do this? If y equals three, does it is it finite? Is it infinite? It goes on forever because it's a horizontal line. Y equals three is that horizontal line. Remember slope, dude? So remember there are four lines in math. Here's Y equals MX plus B, slanted slope. Here is Y equals a number. Oh yes, Y equals a number for a horizontal line and then X equals a number for a vertical line. Now we need to think about the domain. What does domain have to do with again? So if I take my pencil and I run along the X axis, where is it in the function? Like if I stop here, is two in the function? Yes, two, three. What about five? Is five in the function? I go up, yep, it's gonna be there. When X is five, Y is three. What about over here? Does it exist over here in the domain? Yeah, it exists everywhere in the domain. It goes to infinity. And so you would say the domain is all the reals. And a shorthand for that is to go like this. All the reals, then you can make an R like that for domain. Every single number in the, on the X axis will be on that line. If I go to a half, up, oh, it's there. One half, three. Two for X, three for Y, two, three for this point. All of the X's are there. What about the range? Hey, that's good. The range has to do with Y. So is the line down here for Y? No, is the line here for Y? Is the line was well, the line right here for y? Right here? There's no line right here for the y value. Oh, down. What about right here? Yeah. What about right here? Is the line here for y? If I put this point, this would be the point zero five. Is zero five on that line? No. So the range is y equals three exactly. Then we need to look back at the definition of function. Because when I have a graph, I do something different. When I have a graph, when I have a graph, I use the vertical line test. So let's take a look at it. A vertical line test, the vertical line can only touch, touch the function once because it can only have one X value. So if I go like this and I make a vertical line right here, how many times did I touch the function right here? Okay, so it's still a function. Is there anywhere that I could draw a vertical line where it would cross more than once? No, so that means all the X points are different. I don't have any repeating X's here. So a vertical line test, this is a function. Okay, how about one-to-one? -one? If I look back here at one-to-one, -one, it says, hey, you need to do a horizontal line test. This is for the graph. I need to do a horizontal line test to see if it's one-to-one -one and it can only touch it once. So if I do a horizontal line test, making a dotted line going like this, how many times am I touching the function right now? More than once? If I go like this and make a horizontal line, how many times have I touched it? A lot of times. So is it one-to-one? -one? Cause look at all the repeating Y values, three, three, Y is three, Y is three, Y is three, Y is three. All those Y values are repeating. So this is not one-to-one. -one. So we don't know anything about this function, which is why we're gonna have to use our backup plan in math, no matter what level you're at. And you would always use a T-chart. You're just gonna substitute in some numbers and plot the points like you're playing connect the dots. I need some X's. Where are they gonna come from? Exactly, Algebra 1 says you can pick your own. 
and we normally pick on both sides of zero and we choose those nice easy numbers, pick your own X's and we're gonna do what we did on example three. We're gonna substitute it in and find out what our Y values are. We're gonna substitute in negative two for the oh. X. Okay, we're gonna start with squaring it first because that would come before subtracting on PEMDAS. How much is negative two squared? Negative two times negative two is four minus one, three. That's right, we're gonna take the same equation and substitute in those different X values. Negative one squared, one. Negative one times negative one is one minus one. Zero squared is Zero. minus one. Zero, Zero minus negative. one, exactly, negative one. And I'm gonna drop my parentheses. I could have dropped it on the zero. I really only need parentheses with the negative to make sure the negative is being squared. So I could say one squared minus one. One squared is minus one. One minus one. Two squared is four minus one is three. And then we're gonna plot these points, play connect the dots. Negative two, three is your first ordered pair for X and Y. Negative two, three. Negative two for X, and we found that Y was three. So the only thing you, the V is actually the absolute value function. When we get to that graphing those ones, this try to make it as rounded as possible because a V shape is the absolute value of X. We haven't got to graphing that one yet, but we certainly did all the work on it. Take your pencil and run your pencil along the X axis. Now look at this function. This function is going out to infinity slowly, but it is going out, 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 okay? It doesn't go straight up and down. It goes out to infinity. So if I run my pencil along, does the function exist here? I go up, yep, it's there. If I go over here, is it gonna be there? Yes, because it's going out to infinity on both sides. So is there any place that it doesn't exist in for your X's? No, it's everywhere. So that is called all the reals. Every single X fraction, decimal, and whole number will be there for this function because it keeps going out, 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 out as it goes up. What about the range? Think about the range for a second. Don't say anything out loud. Run your pencil along the Y axis and think about, does this function exist everywhere? On the Y axis, does it exist everywhere for the range? Does the function exist up here? It's going out to infinity. Would it be up here? Yep. Because technically it's going out, 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 out. So if I come up here, yep, it's still there. Yep, it's still there. It's on both sides. Is the function here? Yeah, it's right here on both sides. What about down here? It doesn't exist down here. So in your own words, where does it start? Where does it go to? This function for the range starts at what? negative one and goes to infinity, right? So you would say that Y is greater than or equal to negative one. That's okay, here we go. You should be able to do the next one. It's a linear function. What, do you, what general equation am I gonna write down for Y equals three X plus two? So I can be reminded of how to graph this. Here we are y equals mx plus b. This is slope intercept form. Guess what? This is my backup plan. I could graph it like this, but who likes to do all that work, right? We should be able to graph this after today. We should be reminded of what we, we've done for two years. So what does m stand for? Slope. What's the b stand for? The y-intercept. So, Brie, what is the slope of this equation? Three. And what is the y-intercept, Penny? Yes, that's right. Two is going to be your y-intercept. So, remember, we start with the y-intercept first. 
the y-intercept. It's intercepting the y-axis at 2. And then I need to use my slope from this point. What's that saying that we use when we have a graph? What are we going to do with this? Rise over run, right? How do I make my three so I can rise and run? Does three over one still equal three? Yes, yeah, so it'd be rise three, run one. I'm going to rise three, one, two. Oh, okay, I'm going to extend my graph one more. One, two, three, and run one. And there I have two points that I could draw a line. We need domain. Run your pencil along the x-axis. Is there any place you're not going to see the line? The line is going to infinity. And so it's going to infinity on both ends. It's going out. All the reals. What about the range going this way? What's happened to that line as it keeps going out to infinity? Is it still going to be there when I'm way up here? Yes, the line's going to be over here somewhere. So all the reels on that. 